See you peasy. So today we'll be mixing two textures together. Okay, first thing we'll do is come into the shading tab and duplicate the principal BSDF. Make them two different colors so we can see how the mask is going to affect the texture. Then we need to add a mix shader and attach both the principal BSDFs to the mix shader. Now on the mix shader at the top, you see there's something that says FAC, which is the factor. This determines how much of one of the colors is going to be visible. If you turn it up, it's more pink. If you turn it down, it's more green. But we're going to make a mask that determines which part of the color is going to be on which part of the mesh using a black and white mask. So if we add a noise texture, that will be our mask. Then we add a color ramp to make the strength of the black and white in the noise texture more prominent. So hook the noise texture up to the color ramp and temporarily we'll hook the color ramp up to the material output. This way, when we play with the color ramp strengths, we can see exactly how it affects the noise texture, which is our mask. And once the black and white is clearly defined on the sphere, you can then reattach the mix shader back to the material output. Now using the color slot on the color ramp, attach the mask to your factor and huzzah, we have successfully mixed two textures together as one principal BSTF is the black and the other is the white. Now it's time to add the textures to the principled BSDFs. But first we need to add the node wrangler. So come up to edit preferences, click on add ons, type in the word node in the search bar, then tick on the node angler add on, click on the three little bars in the bottom left hand corner and click save preferences. Now click on the first principled BSDF and control shift T, find your texture and select everything and click principled texture set. And on the material output, remove the displacement node, then add your other texture to your other BSDF and delete the displacement node on that one. Now let's have a look at what we've made so far. We have the two PBR textures, the mask, and all of those feed into the mix shader. And click on the cycles render view to see what your texture currently looks like. And just to show you at this point, if we zoom into the mask we made, if you play around with the color ramp and the noise texture, you can see that still changes where the two textures are on the mesh. The color ramp will determine how merged the textures are, whether you want a strong defining line or a slow merge between the two textures, and the noise texture will change the shape and location of the texture. And now I'll show you how to add the displacement properly using the mask. First, we'll move the displacement over so we can see what we're doing and move the displacement texture that is attached to it also. Then come down to your second texture and move your other displacement texture up to where the other ones are. Click on add and type in mix in the search bar, then add the mix node and change it to color. Put the two displacement textures in the slot A and B, then put the result of the mix texture into the height of the displacement node. Then connect the displacement node to where it says displacement on the material output. Now we need to take the same mask we made for the material, then connect it to the mix node we just made that connected the two displacement textures together. And if we come over and look at the mesh, you'll see that each material has the correct displacement. Now we need to make it so the displacement works and actually gives the mesh some shape. So back in layout mode, make sure it's on the render viewport. In the render properties, make sure it's on cycles and change it from supported to experimental. Come down to the modifiers panel and add a subdivision surface modifier and make sure you click on adaptive subdivisions and then come down to the materials tab, click on where it says settings and change it from bump only to displacement and bump. And the geometry goes absolutely crazy. That's because the displacement is too strong on the displacement node. So we just come back into shading and lower the displacement scale on the displacement node down to around 0.1 or until you're happy with what you've got. Then sit back and have a look at your masterpiece. So if I come back to the color ramp, I can still merge the textures as I desire. Of course, depending on your computer, it will be a little bit slow when you mess about with the textures as you're now in fully rendered view on cycles. Okay, to make sense of everything that we've done, let's have a quick recap of the node tree. We have the two PBR textures, the displacement setup, the mask that separates the textures and the displacement, and the mix shader that the textures go into. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video useful, or even if you didn't, please like and subscribe. And that, my friends, is... CHPZ!